Most people know that vitamin A is good for your eyes. Already thousands of years ago, in ancient Egypt, physicians used to prescribe raw liver to treat night blindness. Of course, they didn't know about the existence of vitamin A, but they had indirectly observed its effects. Liver, we know today, is one of the richest food sources of vitamin A, and night blindness is a typical symptom of its deficiency. In the retina of our eyes, where rods and cones are located, vitamin A binds to specific structures to form rhodopsins, the key molecules that allow vision. They receive light signals from the environment and convert them to electrical signals that can be forwarded and interpreted by our brain. But during this work, rhodopsins are degraded and need a constant supply of vitamin A to be regenerated. If vitamin A is deficient, the first cells to be affected are those involved in night vision, our rods. As a result, our eyes will need more time to readjust from bright to dim light, and we will have more difficulties maintaining adequate vision in darkness. Suppose you arrive late at the movie theater and the movie is already on. As you go from the bright hallway to the dark theater, you won't be able to see anything for a few instants. Within a few seconds, however, thanks to vitamin A, your eyes will start adjusting and soon your vision will be back to normal in spite of the dim light. And while a vitamin A deficiency in such a situation would result at worst in us bumping into some legs as we grope for our seat, there are other situations in which vitamin A deficiency could be much more dangerous. Suppose you are driving at night and the headlights of an oncoming car hit your eyes. Such sudden shift from dark to bright will bleach all your rods' rhodopsins and as a result you'll be blind for an instant. With adequate vitamin A, you will regain your vision within a second. But if you are deficient, it could take several seconds before you see again, enough to risk an accident. While night blindness is an early symptom of vitamin A deficiency, full and extended deficiency can result in much more serious consequences, and in particular a disease called xerophthalmia, which literally means dry eye. Without vitamin A, the cells lining the cornea can secrete mucus. The eye gets dry and becomes more susceptible to infections, which easily spread and eventually lead to blindness. Although this is not common in our post-industrialized rich countries, hundreds of thousands of children in less developed areas of Asia and Africa become irreversibly blind each year because of vitamin A deficiency. As vitamin A deficiency also makes them more susceptible to infections, about two-thirds of these children eventually die, an especially unfair fate if you consider that a vitamin A supplement, given a couple of times a year, at the cost of a few cents, would be enough to save their sight and their life. Indeed, vitamin A does a lot more than just taking care of our night vision. And while full deficiencies are not common in our countries, marginal deficiencies are much more widespread and can still unfavorably impact our overall health. Vitamin A can bind to DNA and is able to regulate gene expression in many tissues in our body, and particularly our epithelial cells, those of our skin, our eyes, and our mucous membranes such as the internal surface of our mouth, our digestive tract, our respiratory tract, and our urinary tract. Because of this role, vitamin A maintains the health of our skin and mucous membranes and boosts our ability to prevent and fight infections, as these tissues are our first barrier against pathogens attacks. On top of that, vitamin A also intervenes in the regulation of our immune system and lymphocyte differentiation. Several researchers in the past repeatedly tried to study the long-term effects of vitamin A deficiency in lab animals, but they never succeeded for a simple reason. Without vitamin A in their diet, these poor animals would get infections and die within a matter of weeks. One last role of vitamin A that we need to mention is its cancer preventive activity, especially for tumors of epithelial origins. Indeed, vitamin A acts by slowing down fast-growing cells so that they have time to differentiate. Both slowing down cell cycle progression and promoting correct differentiation are important cancer preventive mechanisms. 
On top of that, vitamin A also protects our skin from damage when we expose it to sunlight. And finally, carotenoids, which are precursors of vitamin A, independently exert cancer-preventive functions, which we will discuss later in this course. But now let's recap and expand on the symptoms that may signal a marginal deficiency of vitamin A. Let's start with our eyes. Here we have night blindness, slower adaptation from bright to dim light, slower vision recovery following a dazzling light, increased sensitivity to bright light, eye fatigue after reading or watching television, often leading to headaches, and when deficiency is more severe, a feeling of dry eyes as you first open them after sleeping. Let's move on to our skin. Our skin becomes dry and rough. It often itches and is prone to infection, eczema, rashes, and acne. The accumulation of dead cells in our pores can create particularly rough areas. This is called follicular hyperkeratosis, and it's usually first observed at the elbows. Your hair can also become dry and loses its shine. Mouth and upper airways have a tendency to become dry as well, as vitamin A is necessary for mucus secretion in all mucous membranes. Finally, a landmark sign of vitamin A deficiency is a higher susceptibility to infections, both systemic infections such as colds and localized infections of our skin, mouth, upper airways, ears, and the urinary system. Not only the frequency of infection increases, but also their duration. Vitamin A as such, also called retinol, is only found in foods of animal origin. It is most abundant in animals' liver, the organ that stores most of it. Beef liver, pork liver, and chicken livers are all excellent sources of this vitamin. Muscle does not store vitamin A, so meat in general is not a very good source of it, but it has some, just like fish and eggs. Non-fortified milk and dairy products are poor sources of vitamin A, but again, they contribute some. Cod liver oil is a traditional natural supplement of vitamin A, and it is also extremely rich in vitamin D. Luckily for those who don't like liver and fish liver oil, vitamin A does not necessarily need to be eaten as such. In fact, it is a semi-essential vitamin, and it can be derived in our body from some plant pigments belonging to the family of carotenoids. Beta-carotene is the most efficient vitamin A precursor. It's the orange-yellow pigment that colors carrots, pumpkins, apricots, mangoes, papayas, cantaloupe, and sweet potatoes, but it is also found in green leafy vegetables such as spinach or broccoli, where its color is masked by the green of chlorophyll. Alpha-carotene and beta-cryptoxanthin also have some pro-vitamin A activity, although their conversion is much less efficient. All the other carotenoids, there are about 600 of them, do not have any provitamin activity, but they have other health-promoting functions in our body. The RDA for vitamin A is between 700 and 900 micrograms of retinal activity equivalents. This unit of measure takes into account the contribution of both preformed vitamin A and its carotenoid precursors. For example, one microgram of preformed retinol counts as one retinal activity equivalent, while one microgram of beta carotene counts as 0.1 retinal activity equivalent. In some situations, however, a slightly higher vitamin A intake may be beneficial, and in particular for those individuals who put a lot of strain on their eyes because of their work, those individuals staring at the computer screen for many hours every day, reading a lot of documents, sewing, as well as those who work in conditions of very bright light, such as out in the sunlight, or under a fluorescent light, or exposed to snow glare or water glare. And finally, those who work in conditions of dim light, such as miners or warehouse workers. All these people need an extra supply of vitamin A to efficiently regenerate their iridopsins. Finally, everyone during a stressful time when susceptibility to infections is increased can benefit from some extra vitamin A. When it comes to using vitamin A supplements, however, we need to be extremely careful because this is one of those tricky nutrients for which the gap between too little and too much is quite narrow.
And unfortunately, both deficiency and toxicity can result in very serious consequences. The amounts of preformed vitamin A found in regular multivitamins are safe, but the amounts contained in some over-the-counter vitamin A supplements can be dangerously high if taken without supervision. Cod liver oil also can provide toxic amounts of vitamin A if used inappropriately. Carotenoid precursors of vitamin A are actually the best supplemental form of vitamin A because they do not carry the same risks of toxicity of preformed retinol. And this is for two reasons. First, the conversion of carotenoids into vitamin A is regulated and relatively slow. Second, intestinal absorption of carotenoids significantly decreases at high dietary intakes, much more than it happens with retinol. The only consequence of high carotenoid blood concentrations is that the skin may turn yellow-orange. This effect is not harmful and disappears as carotenoid intake decreases. Excess preformed vitamin A, in contrast, starts being toxic at doses just three times the RDA. It is toxic for the liver and in the long term it can increase the risk for hip fractures. It is especially important that women in the early months of pregnancy avoid excess vitamin A to prevent birth defects and spontaneous abortions.